never saw you I fell in love when you entered the room It has not been a good day Like literally <clears throat> After I finished editing and processing the video I posted Saturday, it's still Saturday. Like everything went to shit. <laughs> he started having this coughing fit and he couldn't, he couldn't stop and he couldn't recover from it. And he ended up needing like a lot of oxygen and they tried to do like an albuterol treatment for an hour and it didn't help um, and then he just he couldn't come down like at one point I had like three nurses a respiratory therapist and like two doctors in the room and everyone was just staring at him and no one knew what to do Or like what was happening like what what went wrong what happened that like caused this but he just was coughing and he couldn't stop coughing and so because he was requiring consistently more than 40 percent oxygen he was at like 55 he had to go to the icu the picu So like fine, we've been in the PICU before. If you're on a ventilator, you have to be in the PICU. So when he, back when he was on the vent, we always, if we came to the hospital and we had to stay, we were always in the PICU. Fine. Like I'm not a huge fan of it. <laughs> like I don't want to be in the ICU, obviously, but like fine, we'll go. So we go, <laughs> like this is totally, probably completely asinine, but they literally put us in like the smallest, tiniest room that only has like a chair. And I was gonna take tonight off. I was gonna go home and spend some time with Rory. And like get a nap, like a good night's sleep. There's no way I can let Josh sleep there. There's like where the chair sits is like in a hallway, essentially like a really narrow pathway to like his IV fluids and there's no way. He's too tall. And then, and then we get up there and of course you get new doctors and new teams and new everyone and, and they put him on the vent. <laughs> and I don't know why, but that was like the thing, that was like the straw. I think I can't. We haven't used a ventilator in over a year. I really didn't want to have to do that. I just wanted to be better. Okay, we're back. I'm not crying anymore. Thankfully. I just couldn't anymore. I just had a breakdown. I don't do like public, <laughs> I just did public displays of emotion. Um, but uh, Josh got here and I went out to the car and I just, I broke down. 
I had my moment. Um, and you all get to see it, so yay you. <laughs> but the situation has not improved. Um, I went home, I took a shower, I made dinner for myself and like a bunch of leftovers for Josh and Rory. So everyone is fed, but we're back and It's just not, it's not ideal circumstances. So I didn't do a very good job in my hysteria um, of explaining what happened. So he had the coughing fit. He couldn't come back from the oxygen. They, they did the albuterol treatment, which I did mention. So the problem, that's where it kind of started or where we started to realize like, we've gotten a lot worse. So what happened was they put him on the albuterol treatment, which is um, a bronchodilator, right? It helps open up your lungs. When they do that treatment, they hook the treatment up to 100% oxygen straight off the wall. So the air we all breathe is 21% oxygen. Anything above that is supportive. So 100% is as high as it goes, is a lot of extra oxygen. So he was getting the albuterol treatment, which should have helped open up his lungs, and he was getting 100% oxygen with it for an hour. And he wasn't satting above like, he was satting between like 94 and 96, which again, 100% is the best. So 94, 96 doesn't seem bad. But when you're getting 100% oxygen, you should be satting 100%. So that's when the RT was like, Ugh. they were they were honestly nervous to take him off the 100%. They were afraid he was just gonna tank out. So they took him off the 100%, put him back on, they put him up to 55, which is where he was before we started the albuterol treatment. And he only dropped down to about 87. And he's kind of stayed between like the 87, 88 range. So at that point, <clears throat> you know, the doctors were back and everyone was, it was so bizarre. Everyone was just staring at him, like watching him breathe and watching his numbers and just like looking at him so intently. It was so weird. And I was just sitting there like, like looking between faces. And of course everyone's masked. So you can't see everything. I'm like, what, it, what, like, what are they thinking? Um, so the verdict was anything that any child that requires more than 40% oxygen continuously has to come to the PICU. So come to the PICU, end up in a tiny room. I get that that's probably stupid and sounds stupid to most of you, but it's a thing. It's a thing because I like live here now, right? This is where I reside and this is where I'm sitting. And that's Jack's bed. Like, there's that much room. And then this is how much room I have of like floor. That's my foot. Between me and the next thing. So, and I'm like right in front, like the wall, like I'm touching the wall with the back of the chair. So like I can't recline, <laughs> I can't lay down, I can't, sleep essentially now I have climbed in the bed with Jack before that's great when he's upstairs when he's down here and especially when he's on the ventilator there's too many cords there's too many things I can mess up there's too many things I can kink he's got IV fluids running to him he's got his vent tubing going to him he's got his sap monitor going to him cord he's got his lead cords he has six leads in here instead of just three so it's literally impossible to get in bed <laughs> even though he's got this big comfy bed over there so that's why I couldn't let Josh stay here <clears throat> he's just too tall and we had no plans of this happening and so Josh is gonna come tonight and sleep on the bed we have in our upstairs room. If we had known, we would have planned differently. So that's kind of what that was. And then the ventilator 
that's just depressing. Like I can hear it now and it's depressing. Like it's a depressing sound. Um, and that kind of stems from like, if we need a ventilator, that's a little too much support. That means, you know, he's just not capable. The ventilator is giving him 15 breaths a minute. Um, so he doesn't have to do a lot of work on his own, which is great because he's, he's getting really good rest right now. But it means we're, we're getting worse and not getting better for now. So for tonight, he was doing really well. They put the vent on and honestly, we saw a huge improvement in his demeanor. He woke up, he was talking, he was engaging with Lightning McQueen, which we've watched four or five times now today. Um, and he was happy and that was amazing. But this evening, now that he's asleep, he is now on 65% oxygen. So we're going up and his volumes are not good. So they did a chest x-ray before we moved to the PICU and they showed that his lungs in the bottom are over inflated. So what they explained that to me like is like when you blow up a balloon, you know how it's like squishy and then it gets past that point and it gets firm. And so his lungs are at the firm part where they're like overextended. And so it's hard for him to not only um, inflate them fully, but also to deflate them fully. So it's like he can't get a deep, good breath in or out. So now and his volumes are bad and it's kind of indicative of that. So normal volumes are about 90 to 100. And then that, that means the volume that you love air that's filling up your lungs so 100 is your lungs are fully expanded and you know that's good right you want to take big deep breaths in and let big deep breaths out well he's at like 25 so they're a little concerned about that so the big discussion right now is whether we want to change his trach to a coughed trach i wish i had an example of that but when, you, when he first got the trach, it was cuffed. And so, here I can show you what the actual trach looks like. One moment. Okay, you guys had literally no idea you were coming here for an education, but here we are. Okay, so this is a trach, right? This is an arbitrator, this part right here, which is a metal stick that helps put the trach in. So it, cause it's, it's kind of flimsy, floppity. Okay. So, I'm gonna put in my phone down so you can actually see what we're talking about here. Okay, so, this is the end that goes into him, goes right into his throat, and then this is the part that hangs out. And then this is the, like, stopper, or the, I don't know, what's that thing on a sword? The hilt, okay. So, what the cuffed trach is, is there's an extra bit right here and right down here at this bottom end it's a balloon <laughs> a lot of balloons and you push water into a little tube that kind of hangs out down here and it inflates it and so it creates this literal like water balloon that's not squishy totally firm around the end so when it's in there's a seal essentially so what happens is over time you develop a leak right your skin stretches out or it, it goes in um, and it creates a little opening around where the trach is and it creates a leak so they're afraid that he might have too much of a leak and that's what's causing the, the de decrease in volume is that that leak is letting too much air escape out and not go in and down where it needs to go. So that's the discussion for tonight. It's about 10.15. It is Sunday. I slept for about two hours last night. 
<coughs> it's almost 11. Jack, Jack, Josh is on his way. Um, so I can go home and take a nap and cuddle with Rory. So Jack and I are just laying here. Having some cuddles and watching Coco. Are we watching Coco? Did you let me watch Coco with you? Well, then why are we watching Coco? Everything is no. Everything is no. Very rarely do I get anything that isn't a no. He did ask for daddy today though. He said, daddy? Daddy coming? No changes. <laughs> it sounds like we are gonna do the cuff trick today. Um, but other than that, we're just kind of writing it out. It sounds like the doctors are pretty overwhelmed here, so there's a lot of RSV patients that are doing a lot worse than we are, so we're just kind of waiting our turn to see the doctors and see what our plan is for today. We're just going to lay here and watch Coco until Daddy gets here. Let's do it. Cross the bridge. No play daddy. No play in the water. Play in the bridge. You play Okay. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Where are you going to go? Go that way. 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 Oh, well, it's a big playground. It's a big playground. Yeah. 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 So. Now I got a playground. I'm fresh. Here. Yeah. Whoa. Four, five, six, six, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve. Where are you gonna go? Come down the slide. Which slide? Do you wanna go down the big slides? No. You okay? You pooping? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, careful. Blue slide. Ready? Go! Whee! Good job, buddy! Gotta try you try again. Okay. So, here we are. We're still here. We're still in the ICU. Still in my tiny corner of the room. So here um, is the room situation. So there's Jack's bed. He has a bed TV, which is pretty spectacular. Um, but then this is my little corner. As you can see, there's there's not a lot of room here. And then this is a workstation for them. So there's not a ton of room there either. <laughs> what are you gonna do? And then this is just like a corner with more machines. And there's our little booger. Hi booger, no hitting buddy. He's commandeered my pillow. Did you steal mommy's pillow? Josh gave me like most of the day off, which was amazing. Gave me, I, whatever. He came and hang out, hung out with Jack today while I took a break. We went home. Rory and I had lunch in bed. We had a picnic. That's what I called it. <laughs> um, 
and then we took a nap together and that was delightful and then we went to the park and we played for a little while and then we loaded up and came to switch out with daddy so um i'm back it's 902 and we're settling in for the night night nurse is here we've done his cares we've done his bath which is just like a wipe down basically it's nothing fancy um and he's settling he's getting some food so they did restart so here's what the update is they start restarted his feeds today um we're giving him half the volume he normally gets through his g2 and that food just ended let me go turn that pump off so that's what's going on here that's your update for today thank you guys so much for the outpour of like support and love has been insane and incredible and we feel it we feel so lifted um through all of your support and your messages and your love and your offers to bring us dinner or bring us anything or take care of rory or i mean it's incredible the support that we have from all of you and i can't i can't say thank you enough um it has been it's always amazing you know you see the best in people when you know things go sideways you know people really come they show up and they show out and they people are amazing you're all amazing and i appreciate you all so much for all of your love and support so thank you for continuing to lift our family and um send us all the good vibes you've got we all the ones you have to spare at least we could use them and we definitely feel it and we are so so grateful so thank you not much has changed since last night so 40 percent oxygen is i think the biggest one we do count down kind of that we're still on the ventilator though obviously so here we will stay until we can get that weaned back um starting to wonder like is this my karma like <clears throat> we started this around like seven And like it was like right after I, I like walked back from the public restroom that I have to brush my teeth in and like saw all of the parents and their like sweets sleeping on their couches and brushing their teeth in their own bathroom. I'm not bitter. I'm not jealous. It's gonna be a long day. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Bye friends. Wish me luck. Send me the strength to make it through this. Without feeling at someone. I don't know if it's gonna happen today. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I almost wish to knock on the wall and be like, hello, there's a baby sleeping in this room. Can you keep it down, folks? Thank God he sleeps like his daddy. Hi. Did you tell the noisy misters next door to shush it? Did you say shh? Shh. Give him the grumpy face and say shh. You didn't tell them? Oh. Should we send you over there with your grumpy face? You think they'd listen? No, I don't either. They're just working hard, but they're very loud. You drink? Are you watching Queen? How many times are we gonna watch Queen today? 
Your nurse said maybe we could get a high chair and get out of bed today. Do you want to get in a high chair? You don't? You don't want to sit up? Maybe you could color. I've got colors. Do you want to color? Maybe we could think about it? Like work up to that? Okay, we'll think about it. No, no, no. So yeah, so that's where we're at today. We're hopefully gonna get a high chair, get out of this bed, and uh, get some some good time in. What do you think? You see that grin? I saw it. Can you say bye, friends? Say we'll see you Wednesday. Maybe we won't be in the ICU anymore on Wednesday. What do you think? Good plan? Can you say bye? No, you tried. I saw the arm come up. Say bye. Say. Hasta la vista. Okay. Bye, friends. Oh, I would do it all.